Good afternoon and welcome to Friday's Lunchtime News. For the man at the very top of the BBC, it was a simple question of right or wrong. And too many people at the BBC just got it wrong. After giving the top executive of the BBC a private and brutal grilling yesterday, Sir Michael Lyons went public today with all guns blazing. The Ross brand affair was totally unacceptable. You, the licence fee payer, simply deserve better. It must never happen again, he said, and day-to-day -day bosses at the Beeb need to get a grip. But most of them are still in place, and Jonathan Ross will be back, albeit a little poorer, in three months' time. Three months in which the BBC have to come up with better and more effective controls that protect you from offence, whilst not retrenching into bland programming. So, it's a tall order that places the men and women who decide what you watch and listen to on the BBC in the Last Chance Saloon. Nina Nana reports now on the Chairman's Challenge. Will uh, Jonathan be coming out? Uh, he tells me not. Okay. Um, I've got no reason to suggest otherwise. Is he there? <laughs> his critics say he's overexposed on the airwaves, but Jonathan Ross remained out of sight at his home today while the police negotiated the cameras. The boxes on the drive indicating that the family's Halloween party is going ahead the day after Ross's suspension for 12 weeks without pay. Never, ever, ever underestimate the tastes of the audience. Meanwhile, the resignation of his boss at Radio 2, Leslie Douglas, was inevitable after the broadcast, according to the head of the BBC Trust. Editorial procedures must be tightened, he said, but conceded that would be easier said than done. The BBC mustn't stop taking risks. This isn't a new puritanism that we're talking about, but it is a clear emphasis on proper editorial controls. And one of the things the Trust has asked the Director General to focus on, because we want to be quite surgical in the way that we deal with this, one of the things we've asked him to concentrate on are those programmes, as you say, which are predictably risky, where the performers are, you know, by definition provocative. What the Queen didn't say in her Christmas message. Mock the Week, the BBC's comedy show, is clearly one such provocative programme. But in the very week when one row was escalating, this offensive remark about the Queen was aired on the show. I've had a few medical problems this year. <laughs> I'm now so old that my <laughs> is haunted. So will you now investigate Mock the Week and other programmes well, like that? Well, uh, my understanding is that on the, on, the, on the editorial side of the BBC, that is being looked at. Could you lend Mrs Richard your assistance in connection with her reservation? The man who directed Faulty Towers and ran the BBC's light entertainment department during a more gentle era in comedy says the BBC must tread carefully. Uh, I think they've got to keep a balance. They've got to uh, keep the young audience uh, involved in television and radio. Uh, but I just think they have to be more careful about what they do transmit. But even the BBC's own stars admit that their like have too much power. I think that the point we've all learned is that I think producers have to be given uh, the power that gives them the protection to make the right decisions. And th but that's so difficult to do if you know the internal workings of, 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 of big stars and their agents and, you know, what, ha when do you, you must absolutely tell somebody no if they're doing the wrong thing. Sod and pop them on the breast. <laughs> but as this week has proved, saying no is far from easy. Nina Nana, ITV News. And as you can see on our screen there, in the last few minutes it's been announced that Jonathan Ross has taken the decision to step down from presenting the 2008 British Comedy Awards on ITV1. That's come from the broadcaster today. Well, joining me now to put some of this in context is a man who knows all about handling big star names and the fallout from controversies that they can provoke, PR guru Mark Bukowski. Mark, thanks very much indeed for joining us this afternoon. Let's start, if we can, with the BBC chairman. He wants tighter editorial controls, but he doesn't want bland programming. Easier said than done when you're handling big-name talent. Yeah, it, it is. It, it, it's a great soundbite. Um, what, you, what we're seeing is some very forceful words from the BBC right from the top where there should have been perhaps those words at the beginning of the week, but they're sending out the right signals. But you're right, um, a celebrity has a very big ego and occasionally they believe that they're right. That's why you need, as Chris Evans said in your clip, and he's absolutely right, equally powerful producers to talk common sense. That will need investment. I think many of the media organisations are not investing in the talent to help the talent. And that is a big issue. 
And when, as you also heard, because you were listening kindly whilst we were uh, covering the last item uh, with that breaking news from Romilly, is Jonathan Ross right to say, I can't do the Comedy Awards on the ITV, or is that a sign of retrenchment already? Uh, he, the, the Comedy Awards are in the first week of January. He would still be under suspension from the BBC. I think there's a lot of provocation, particularly from the media. We've seen the Comedy Awards. They're vital. It's a live show. Um, and clearly, he doesn't want to be caught out. I think that it probably is a show too far for him during this time when he's serving, you know, he's being penitent. And we've seen some of those incredible faux pas made on that show. And it's live, and there's no getting away from it, and he might be tempted. So All I right. think it's a, probably the right decision to be made. Apologise for interrupting there. Final quick thought from you, Mark, if you will. Many of these stars have their own production companies that make these programmes for the BBC, or indeed for ITV. That's a real problem in editorial control, is it not? Yes and no. I think stars want to take control of their output, but going back to that original point, if you've got good people helping you produce those programmes, there's nothing wrong with that. You've just got to get the right talent working with the talent. Mark Bukowski, always good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. There was further confusing advice for pregnant women today. Doctors told them they can drink small amounts of alcohol. It may even be good for their children. A study of over 12,000 three-year-olds born to women who drank alcohol during pregnancy found girls were less prone to emotional problems and boys were brighter. The government advises expectant mums not to drink at all. So, Jackie Kabler reports now on the conflicting advice. To drink or not to drink, it's long been a dilemma for pregnant women. Sometimes doctors saying it's all right to drink a little, then warnings not to drink.